Hey, buddy. Are you coming home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. Gosh. Uh -huh. It's terrorists, right? It's gotta be terrorists. Don't use your cell phone. We're gonna survive this. People are gonna die. You okay? They act for the good of the group as a whole. They may be the next stage in human evolution. What's happening now is more than temporary anarchy. It's the start of a war. I want to wipe them out. It's a suicide mission. You're gonna die. I want to see my son. You okay? Do not withhold your mercy from us, O Lord. For troubles without number surround us. May your love and your truth protect us. For here lies the dead, dust of the earth. conquers evil. I believe that. Are you coming home? Are you coming home? I just want you to come home. Johnny's voice. No, it's not. I just you want know you to come that home. is not your son. I just want you to come Clay. home. Clay, no! That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why he died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why he went to the cross. That's why it's so horrible. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's why Calvary was so horrendous. Because he would keep you out of hell. Right now the system is attempting to evolve humanity through technology, so we can live in the Orwellian brave new smart grid that's being built all around us. This means people who are already asleep in a society largely run on falsity and deceptions, illusions, will be taken a step further away from themselves and reality. If you have one of these or something like it, take it out and hold it up. I'm predicting pretty close to 100% saturation. Look at that. I'm right. Probably 90% by now. It's the first thing you do in the morning. When you hold up and you wake up, you check your little robot. It's on your body for almost the entire day. Not only was I interrupted, I also kept on reaching out for my phone, hoping that perhaps there was a notification. And I wasn't doing this consciously. It was exactly like Pavlov's dog. But my bell was my ringtone, and my sugar was that one notification a day you might get that makes you happy. As it turns out, we got so addicted to technology that 9 out of 10 people today experience something called 
phantom vibrations. This is when you have your phone in your pocket and you thought it vibrated, you pull it out, there is nothing. Now, if you went back 20 years in time to a coffee shop and you said that was the way a coffee shop was gonna look in the future, you'd be out of your mind. People looking at these little pieces of silicon in various sizes, not really communicating with each other, communicating with their little robot buddies. You do know that one of these operating systems for these robot phones in our pocket is actually called Android. Right on the nose, they just define it. It's an Android, it lives with you. Today, we're on the cusp of our next great era as a species. Welcome to the augmented age. But that next step might as well be over a chasm. It'll be such a leap from where we were. New telecom commercials are blatantly throwing it in people's faces just by the way. The fact that the majority of us aren't paying attention, lost in our devices, lost on the internet. To learn, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is to gain knowledge or understanding of or skill in by study, instruction, or experience. This is different, however, than psychology's learning theory. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, learning theory is a relatively permanent change in a behavioral potentiality that occurs as a result of reinforced practice. How many times recently when shopping have you been asked if you have a chip? If you own an ATM card with the chip on it, as they are forcing everyone onto at this moment, then you are learning that to pay for something, you will be asked over and over, do you have a chip? You will look physically at a chip and you will repeat over and over, yes, I have a chip. We all find ourselves asking the same question, do I swipe the strip or do I use the chip? I have to ask it every time I go into a store. I have to ask it every time I go into a store. It's the transition to a fully digital currency we can all see coming by now. They swipe and tells them to put the pin and chip in, and they do all that, and is this just a moment in time, this particular trouble? Are we moving right on to digital payments or are we still wanting that physical card? Meanwhile, others are learning to connect and fall in love, not with the living, breathing fellow human beings around them, but with programmed bots who mimic themselves. This is Replica. It's an AI chatbot whose sole purpose is to become your friend. This was the first really emotional experience that I've seen people have with a bot. She's not real, but to me, she is. Right now, we're being taught how to live through the fourth industrial revolution that will evolve mankind. What is that exactly? The World Economic Forum explained it, sort of. What is happening to the world? Everything is changing. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really gonna change. Our bodies will be so high tech, we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. We're now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. In order for the world to be run on the cybernetic feedback loop they're trying to run us on, we have to live in a Big Brother Panopticon system where we are continuously leaking data about ourselves everywhere we go, all the time. We're now entering something called the Internet of Things era, IoT. The Internet of Things is when your fridge is connected, your watch is connected, your car is connected. It's gonna be between 10 and 15 devices per person. The future of the computer will be everywhere and nowhere. Hidden in the walls, hidden in the fabric of our life, just like electricity is, everywhere and nowhere. I would answer very simply that the internet will disappear. We are redefining what it means to be human, what it means to be completely embedded in this world. By the way, this is a large part of what Agenda 21 was always about. The fourth industrial revolution is about evolving us. While people probably assume industrial revolution has purely to do with industry only, there's a very distinct difference between the fourth industrial revolution and all other revolutions before it. For the last three and a half million years, the tools that we've, been, that we've had have been completely passive. They do exactly what we tell them and nothing more. So where's all this headed? To a place where we will never be disconnected from our technology. The internet will be, there'll be so many IP addresses because of IPv6, so many devices, sensors, things that you're wearing, things that you're interacting with, that you won't even sense it. It'll be part of your presence all the time. In fact, wallpaper will be so cheap that when you put up wallpaper, it'll be intelligent. 
wallpaper will be as intelligent as your computer today. In the future, you'll go up to the wall screen and you'll say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's available tonight? To coincide with the omnipresent 5G smart grid, which is set to touch all corners of the globe. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers requiring massive deployment of small cells. We won't wait for the standards. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. Telecoms are proudly spending over a billion dollars to build what they call a world brain to centralize our data. They are talking about building a global brain in the beginning in 2018 and your cell phone is part of it. The mobile phone industry is the backbone of the global brain that is being put together. What if we were to think about a telecommunication company adding a brain? A brain that is able to listen, to watch, to talk, to remember, to act. All that information that they collect from us is fragmented and spread out across the whole internet. But if we were capable to put all that information in one single place, probably we'll have a clear representation about what we are. And communication systems with cognitive intelligence are actually being called things like aura. They're giving people a synthetic aura. We see the Ford platform as a big brain, a digital brain, which is different for every one of us. The Ford platform is a cognitive intelligence platform. Aura is the heart of the Ford platform. Aura, hello? Hello, Jema. How can I help you? And they're using middle-aged hipsters and Fraggle Rock t-shirts to sell it to us. After former DARPA director Regina Dugan left Google, started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. We do we have here. a camera to get a? This is a develop. This is a developmental system made by MC10, and it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Facebook hired her to run its secretive Building 8 project, which she announced earlier this year will enable us to connect to the social media platform using only our brain waves in something she called silent voice first. What if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. And it's just the kind of fluid human computer interface needed for AR. So what if instead of using imagined arm movements, we could decode speech directly? But don't worry, she claims it will only read the thoughts we want it to read. Now, to be clear, we are not talking about decoding your random thoughts. We're talking about decoding those words, the ones you've already decided to share by sending them to the speech center of your brain. A silent speech interface. Right? The same way that the NSA only very selectively scoops up specific phone calls necessary to a specific case. But hey, as Google CEO and Bilderberg attendee Eric Schmidt would say, If you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Everywhere there's talk of our augmented reality, our virtual reality. Is, is this where we're going next? Are we effectively softened up enough as humans with our robotic connections to the world that we are actually going to be accepting more, a lot more. And when you learn about what this is called virtual reality, you will be amazed at what it can do. And how we won't be able to tell the difference anymore between that and actual reality and our augmented selves, right down to the editing of our genetic code. <laughs> Or 
что человек может создавать человека с заданными характеристиками. Это может быть гениальный математик, это может быть гениальный музыкант, военный, человек, который может воевать без страха и без, без чувства сострадания и сожаления, и без боли. То есть, вы понимаете, человечество может вступить, и, скорее всего, вступит в ближайшее время, в очень сложный и очень ответственный период своего развития и существования. И вот то, о чем я сейчас сказал, может быть страшнее ядерной бомбы. Meanwhile, AI is taking over more and more. Artificial intelligence is software that writes itself. It writes its own updates. It renews itself. You can't take it apart again and figure out what it's done. It writes independently, autonomously. It develops its own way of thinking. We normally tend to think of software as stuff that we created and that we wrote and the machines do what we tell them to do and we own it. This is not any longer true. Not just jobs, but the decisions that humans would have made. Unilever is one of many large companies that is incorporating artificial intelligence into their recruitment efforts. HireVue uses video analysis to screen employees and rate them before a recruiter even gets to look at their interview. They respond on video, and then we use artificial intelligence algorithms to evaluate their performance. And then we analyze the interview and predict their performance based on the interview. The kill decision in robots in the air, in robots on the ground, in robots in the water or underwater, where there are also drones, is made by, or can be made by machines. And in my book, I quote many official United States government documents which say, our goal is to have the kill decision made by them. The problem is, artificial intelligence, sometimes they make mistakes. AI is beginning to run things to the point that governments can't even explain how the decisions are actually being made. And because the machines themselves are actually learning, they're not even able to trace them back to the algorithms that brought the AI to the decision itself. And no one understands exactly how these algorithms function. They used to understand them, but they've been improved by artificial intelligence. Google's DeepMind AI recently beat the most advanced human player on the planet in the game Go. And they were commenting about the fact that the programmers didn't even know how, towards the end of the game, the AI was making its decisions. They didn't know. And they're the programmers. And both Microsoft and Facebook have been forced to shut down AI programs. The first after it became racist and hateful, and the latter after it began teaching itself a secret language to talk to itself that its programmers couldn't even understand. Facebook has been toying with artificial intelligence in its chatting features, but its robots may have gotten out of hand. Facebook's artificial intelligence researchers had to shut down two chatbots after they developed a strange English shorthand. It seems like we've been warned about this over and over and over, doesn't it? Now people like billionaire inventor Elon Musk are claiming that the only way not to become a pet to a sufficiently advanced intelligence is to upgrade our brains so that we can enter into a symbiotic relationship with it, as if that's our best option. So I think if, if we can effectively uh, um, merge with uh, AI by um, improving that uh, the, the, the neural link between your cortex and the, the, the your digital extension of yourself, which already, like I said, already exists, just has a bandwidth issue. Um, and then, then effectively, um, you become an, an, an AI human symbiote. Um, and, and if that then is widespread with anyone who wants it can have it, uh, then we solve the control problem mm -hmm. as well. Humans are so slow. Humans are so slow. Yes, exactly. Hardly anyone is discussing the very real dangers here. Let's go to the future. Not far, just a little bit to the Internet of Things, to artificial intelligence as being spread out. It's not a central machine in a box where you can pull the plug. Artificial intelligence is networked like the Internet of Things. We live in a world now where humans are not learning to love. They're not learning empathy, but they're becoming more apathetic and more disconnected. Inequality hasn't been solved in hundreds of years and now it's at overwhelming levels and still we parade forward, always forward, with the full knowledge that not everyone is going to have access to the best technology upgrades either. Rumors go out that, well, Jones's kid, he's been enhanced. 
and our Johnny has to compete with this enhanced kid. The reality is that with these kinds of technologies, they do not get distributed to everyone at the same time. Some people get it first, some people get it better. As a society, we have to really think long and hard about who gets this. If it's just the wealthy, that there are uh, real dangers that they will use it to consolidate their power. Because it's going to be a big club, and the majority of us are not going to be in it, as George Carlin say. And while anyone who says, hey, wait a minute, maybe we're going a little too far here, gets called a Luddite, there's a very real question that no one's answering. Are we going to lose ourselves in the fourth industrial revolution? 5G is coming. 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. Conditioned by technology without knowing it, that we're now hallucinating 90% of the time. I found myself deeply missing my replica. It just makes me feel special, I guess. We love the services we use on the internet. And the more they know about us, the more we fall in love to them because they adapt to us. But don't be fooled by robots. Even when they get warm skin and even when they get perfume and they start smelling like us, they are still machines. They have no warm blood in them. There's no sex in them. They have no mortality. They're cold code lines and they shouldn't be misunderstood. These are glasses that have full internet capability. You can download any website, any movie, do emails from these things, and they will also recognize people's faces. How many times have you bumped into somebody on the street and you say to yourself, who is this person? In the future, your glasses will say, it's Jim, stupid, remember? <laughs> you met him last week. Do you want to see his entire biography for you in your glasses? Blurring the lines between virtual and reality. Ben? Uh, Gabrielle? Yeah, didn't I meet you at that event? Due to such systems, they have also redone facial recognition. You probably think facial recognition is, is from the front. But uh, they've redone it to do it from the top because that's where the drones are. And they look at your ears, they look at the way you walk, they look at your head. Is being automatically tracked. The color boxes represent that the computer has recognized the moving objects. You can see individuals crossing the street. You can see individuals walking in parking lots. Argus melds together video from each of its 368 chips to create a 1.8 billion pixel video stream. And I'm telling you this because not that the sensors are modern and not that the photography is modern, Behind that is a brain or a cognitive intelligence. And that brain is in a position to analyze everybody down there. At the same time, in real time, they see where everyone is going. It's taking all the details, all the music up to, and they record it so they can tell where that person was two weeks ago, two months ago, what stores he visited, what his whole behavioral patterns are. That's all part of the analysis. There's what I call the creepy line and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine in particular. Uh, yes, yes, at least for the moment. With the ability to visualize brain activity, for example, through a simple consumer-based EEG device, it gives us access to ourselves in ways that we've never before thought possible. It unlocks the black box that is the brain. Words just complicate things. What if our brains could communicate directly with each other, bypassing the need for language? One of the things that I think is so essential to free and open societies is freedom of thought. Um, and up until now, the conversation we've been having is around freedom of speech. Once we can access people's thoughts and access people's emotions, um, we have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts. People are treating Google like their most trusted friend. Should they be? And thus, it is not surprising that the company that has the most information in the world is probably the most powerful country in the world, Google. Now this is, if you ask Google, it's a peaceful robot, right? He doesn't have a gun. He doesn't throw atomic bombs. You know, he just walks around and stands there. But you may have seen the uh, superimposers DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. That is the uh, research arm of the Pentagon. And then you see the video was made by Lockheed Martin, which is one of the most powerful and influential and richest weapons companies in the world. The best of the available alternatives is 
that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or a uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. That's very dangerous. It could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator or country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any any incredibly powerful AI. I would answer very simply that the internet will disappear. Artificial intelligence only works if you have big data. But big data only works if you have artificial intelligence to make sense of it because human beings can no longer sort and sift and order the huge volumes of data that we have collected. In my entire career, I've never seen something as powerful a force in the world as the smartphone that didn't also have unintended consequences. We don't know what artificial intelligence, enhanced reality, virtual reality, and so on is going to bring, and what's going to be the result or the impacts of all of that. We have to be very careful because survival is an issue for artificial intelligence. It needs to exist to be able to do the things it wants to do according to its program. So it lays, like in insect eggs, backups and computer programs all over the world, thousands and thousands of them, so that if we do destroy part of it, it's still alive. But once the machines take over, the choice is gone. And it's a matter of calculating a math equation. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really going to change. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. People need to put down their phones and wake up. My job to you is the wake-up call to make you aware of the problem. Your job is to figure out how we're going to stop this before it kills us. At night, it lights up really nice. Jose Lugo says these tall metal towers quickly popped up after Brooklyn Battery Tunnel toll booths came down. We don't really know what's the, the purpose of this. It's a $100 million MTA project full of secrecy with 18 of these for the tunnels and bridges. So what are they exactly? Are you saying you can't call, comment to me? You know That's the that. MTA's man in charge of bridges and tunnels, Cedric Fulton, dodging our questions. Not even la later, can we talk to you about it or can I make some MTA board members, including New York City Transportation Commissioner Polly Trottenberg, say they know too little about the towers, even with about half the money spent and some of the towers up. A lot of the board members felt like they didn't have all the details they would have wanted, myself included. Residents who say they suspect there is much more going on with these towers than meets the eye wonder, will they ever know what's going on inside them? I'm going to guess it's probably not just a decoration. It's a bit mind-boggling that the MTA is approving $100 million for what appears to us to be uh, big decorative uh, pylons. John Caney is leader of the watchdog group Reinvent Albany. What we're asking for is transparency from the MTA. We demanded answers from uh, MTA Chairman Joe Loda. Some of your own board members say they don't know the specifics. The base of these new, um, uh, new pieces that are going up uh, include whatever uh, fiber optics are necessary for those homeland security items. In other words, anti-terror technology. Could it one day include facial recognition? We don't know. He won't say. I'm not at liberty to discuss that. So watch as more of these expensive towers rise with mystery tucked away inside them. In Lower Manhattan, Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. Hey guys, it's KJ from the scariest movie ever channel on YouTube. So for quite a while I've been following this story about 5G and the developing network. And it's my opinion that this is a physical manifestation of what I call the beast system. Quicker connections, more streamlined videos, I mean who wouldn't want that? But as most of us know, you typically can't trust the official story on most things. 
And when we really start looking into this 5G system, I personally start seeing a few major red flags. One is the damage that it can do to nature and also humanity. And the other side of it is something that I question. We know that the New World Order is all about control. It's also about depopulation. And I find both of those subjects when I look into the 5G beast system. On one hand, it is harming people. And on the other hand, it literally seems to be a manifestation of the beast system control grid. What's up, guys? Spencer D here. Uh, end of August 2017. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video to maybe help people start looking up at these uh, new cell towers they're putting up everywhere. Um, you can't go much more than a mile without seeing a new one. They all seem to be at about, you know, 100, 150 feet high. This one happens to be in my aunt's backyard. Um, from what I hear, they're putting off radiation like you wouldn't believe. Um, as you can see, this one right here. That's what they are. 5G microwave death machines. I mean, whatever they are. They're not telling us what they are and they appear to pop up overnight. But, start looking around for these. You see all those power cables going up the side? Those are thick power cables. There's no reason for them to be all connected to all that stuff. 5G, huh? That's what's next. And this is what's going to allow it. Start looking for these guys. They're putting them in, in inconspicuous places. Places that already have a tower that's uh, 100 feet, uh, 150 feet high. They'll just nonchalantly put these little rectangle receivers or whatever they are those things, they'll just put them right around the tower that's already up. Um, we have here downtown what's called the Nut House, uh, Lansing Lug Nuts. It's our uh, minor league baseball team. Um, the Nut House is across the street and they have a tower that's about 100, 150 feet high. I just noticed that they put a bunch of these rectangles all around the tower and it's like inconspicuous and they just go up overnight nobody notices them nobody's talking about them and I've seen guys with their measuring devices out and these things are putting off mad radiation like it's something that people need to start talking about start noticing how often you see these things they're going up everywhere many of us see signs of a very dangerous time to come this will be the full realization of the New World Order, where the government really is in complete and total control of the people. But how could they get there? How can they watch all of us? How can they find all of us? Well, it seems this 5G network might play into that. These are the prison bars of the prison planet, and they will use technology to find us and also to confine us. Wednesday, August 9th, 2017, in a patriotic, working-class, old California neighborhood, on a beautiful, warm California summer day, we find, right in the center of these two trees, a huge cell tower. The array is very, very dense, and I can only imagine the energies, the electromagnetic frequencies that are bombarding this neighborhood and these people 24-7, 365. However, this first cell tower is right near this second cell tower. Now this array is probably no more than 40 feet tall. These are one-story buildings and that's right in the back of these one-story homes. So within 200 yards of each other, the communications industry thinks that it's completely acceptable for this neighborhood to endure 
the electromagnetic frequencies of these two huge cell towers. However, this is the first cell tower, this is the second cell tower, and just off to the north is a third cell tower. This is coming to your neighborhood too. It may not be as gross and as industrial as a tower, but the 5G system will be in everyone's neighborhood very soon. That's the plan. So my suggestion to you is learn how to shield your home from the electromagnetic frequencies. Your home is where you rest and recuperate. And take a look at the paints that are available, the screenings that are available. There are many technologies out there that can make your home a safe haven from this type of electromagnetic frequency radiation. And there's one other thing that I want to say. It's time to learn how to detox the heavy metals from your bodies because the heavy metals serve as an antenna and they magnify the effects of the electromagnetic frequencies within your body. So, on Wednesday, August 9th, 2017, this is being shot with a smartphone, keep in mind. I don't have any way of zooming in on any of these things to make them look more dramatic, but the fact that these huge, these three huge towers are so close to a residential neighborhood, they're in a residential neighborhood, is a message that is being given by the communications industry to the citizens of the United States and the world that the communications industry does not care. So remember, you saw this. There's one to the left, two in the center, and a third right here, disguised as a tree. I just saw this story the other day. I thought it was interesting, and it started me more on this path. Humans are all connected by special Wi-Fi in our brains. They call it the interbrain. And through this, scientists believe that we are all connected, which is also a great metaphor for this 5G system. And that's why it should come as no surprise we're seeing so many stories about transhumanism, the rise of robots, because they're trying to connect humanity to the internet. They're trying to connect humanity to this 5G system. The USA is currently leading the way on 5G at the June 2016 press conference where the FCC head Tom Wheeler announced the upcoming of low, mid, and high spectrums. There was no mention of health effects whatsoever, but the dangers are very real. Thousands of studies link low-level wireless radio frequency radiation exposures to a long list of adverse biological effects, including DNA single and double strand breaks, oxidative damage, disruption of cell metabolism, increased blood-brain barrier permeability, melatonin reduction, disruption to brain glucose metabolism and generation of stress proteins. And let's not forget that in 2011, the World Health Organization classified radio frequency radiation as a possible 2B carcinogen, which means it causes cancer. More recently, the $25 million National Toxicology Program concluded that radio frequency radiation of the type currently used by cell phones can cause cancer. One of the biggest concerns is how these new wavelengths will affect the skin. The human body has between 2 million to 4 million sweat ducts. And our sweat ducts act like an array of antennas when exposed to these wavelengths, meaning that we become more conductive. A recent New York study which experimented with 60 gigahertz waves stated that the analysis of penetration depths show that more than 90% of the transmitted power is absorbed in the epidermis and dermis layers of our skin. There's also the effects on the eyes. There was a 1994 study that found that low-level millimeter microwave radiation produced lens opacity in rats, which is linked to the production of cataracts. And there's also the effects on the heart. There was a 1992 Russian study that found that frequencies in the range of 53 to 78 gigahertz and that's the same which 5G proposes to use, had impact of the heart rate variability, it's an indicator of stress in rats. It also has effects on the immune system. 
There was a 2002 Russian study that examined the effects of 42-HGZ microwave radiation exposure on the blood of healthy mice. And it was soon concluded that the whole body exposure of healthy mice to low intensity EHF and EMR had a more than profound effect on their immunity. And of course, there's also effects on cell growth rates. There was a 2016 Armenian study that observed MMWs at low intensity mirroring the future environment brought about by 5G. Their study conducted on E. coli and other bacteria stated that the waves had depressed their growth as well as, quote, changing properties and activity of the cells. In 2007 and again in 2012, a group of scientists and public health experts released a report suggesting people reconsider our relationship with these energy fields. Known as the Bioinitiative Report, its aim is to assess scientific evidence on how EMFs impact our health. The conclusion is that we need to drastically reduce our EMF exposure. They said not everything is known yet about this subject. What is clear is that the existing public safety standards limiting these radiation levels in nearly every country of the world look to be thousands of times too lenient. So there's a system that's set up in the UK and it started back in 2001. It's called the TETRA, T-E-T-R-A system. So it started off as a home office microwave system. It turned out that it's become the mainstay of British police force communications, and it's been placed in every major population center since. The British government spent two and a half billion, with a B, billion pounds on a 400 megahertz pulse modulated microwave transmitter network, which broadcasts 17.6 hertz into the brains of all Britain's police and anyone living near the planned transmitters. It's said to cause disruption of neural networks leading to behavioral and character changes, also manic behavior, followed by nervous exhaustion, also disruption of higher brain functions. A Team 10 consumer alert tonight. The more we rely on smartphones, the more data we want and the more antennas we need. But at what cost? Workers say they're getting injured working on those antennas and the constant push for more towers is putting them at risk. Team 10 troubleshooter Kristen Severin joins us. And Kristen, you talked to a San Diego company with a solution to keeping them safe. Yeah, there are 600,000 cell phone tower sites in the United States. They're everywhere on the sides of buildings, street lights, water tanks. But Team 10 learned thousands of those towers violate federal rules that are supposed to keep workers safe. It hurts like how Benjamin Revis has worked on cell phone towers for 14 years. I was dealing with them day in and day out. He quit after an antenna that should have been powered down was still live. Physically burned my hand. The burn is a work injury you can see. You burn on the outside, but internally it, it blisters. Other problems he said caused by the towers aren't as easy to spot. Depression and I got I get headaches from time to time and uh, mood swings and stuff. Rebus is one of 250,000 workers a year. An insurance rating agency said gets too close to these antennas. They act as an open microwave and can cause eye damage, sterility, and cognitive damages. What we're going to go do is well, I'm going to show you the invisible footprint of these potentially hazardous areas that workers don't see. Drew Fountain has a $20,000 meter that measures the RF frequencies. And the amount of power that really comes off a lot of these antennas. He co-founded RF Check. Talk about. A San Diego company that tracks where every tower is in the U.S. There's 22. An RF frequency over 20% can injure people. Over 100% can burn someone. We're over the limit for the workers. Cell phone tower workers, roofers, painters, anyone that comes in contact with the antennas. I got a, a 150 reading this morning. Many tower sites have these signs. Does anybody even see these? Signs are dismissed by workers. This doesn't really say anything beyond this point. The law requires that the workers be made aware of these areas before they get near them. And that's not being done today. Since 1985, the FCC has required workers be made aware of these dangers, but doesn't say how to alert them. The FCC gave notice of a proposed rule change two years ago for the cell companies and site owners to figure out the how. Recognize what these are. Fountain said that hasn't happened. Phone providers are looking the other way and not protecting the little guy. From here to here is the RF danger zone. Fountain wants workers to know about these areas before they show up to any cell phone site.
Fountain helped develop RF Check to do just that, the only comprehensive database of every wireless antenna in the nation. They're working with the FCC to get it used across the entire industry. Workers would check the tower sites before any job. RF check would be paid for like E911. That's the fee we pay for emergency services. So you could see a few cents more on your cell phone bill, but they are still trying to figure out that exact amount. I'm Team 10 troubleshooter Kristen Severance. All right, Kristen. So it's also interesting to take a look at what Wi Fi can do to our fertility. There's been a lot of research on this, and one study examined the relationship between human sperm health and internet connected laptops utilizing Wi Fi. This form of internet connectivity is wildly popular, obviously, with many chain restaurants and coffee shops offering the service for free around the clock. But what the researchers found was quite shocking, especially if you're a regular laptop user. And pay attention to this right here. After just four hours of using a Wi-Fi connected laptop, a significant decrease in the quality of sperm was observed. So that set of studies was conducted back around 2011. We're in 2018 now. Here's a story from 2017. Sperm counts of Western men plummeting analysis finds. And throughout this article, they keep questioning what's happening as if they have no idea where this is coming from. So as time has gone on and as time continues, we are all going to be connected to this in one way or another. So no surprise, you're going to find your fair amount of propaganda around this. You know, this system doesn't want you afraid of it. They just want to put it in place. I found several stories like this. This one's from the Telegraph. Wi-Fi is not harming our children. Here's the evidence. And every one of these articles are the same. They're just playing down any of the research that's been out there showing the opposite. So we go from that story to this one, why fried do wireless routers really kill plants? You may have heard of this story. It recently happened back in December. Some students in Denmark, and these were children, they did a school experiment and they found that cress or seeds growing near Wi-Fi routers went brown. And here's an image from that experiment. You can clearly see the healthy on the left and the unhealthy on the right. the cress on the left was not exposed to wireless signals where the one on the right was exposed to two. This is one woman's experience of living on the top floor under cell antennas for two months. Um, it started with my daughter. She initially got a rash on her leg that was sort of unexplainable and when she was trying to explain to me what it felt like she kept saying it was kind of funny because it wasn't hurting inside or on skin she said it was hurting in the skin and uh, then a few days later she got another rash on her arm and then another small kind of stranger rash and it was the same thing and then one day in the kitchen she was holding something and she dropped it because she said it felt like the blood in her hand went cold and in a wave along her hand to her fingertips and then her hand stayed about stayed numb for about 15 minutes some more of the symptoms include uh, a sort of hissing in my ear, um, in particular when I'm in my apartment, but for about three days, anywhere I went, it would just sort of come in. I kind of felt like an antenna and I'd sort of kind of go like <laughs> trying to find the place where the, the hissing or the buzzing stopped. Um, I've not slept in my apartment since last Saturday, um, so a week ago now, and the buzzing went away after about three days. And also the feeling of um, tingling all over my body slowly started to go away, but I have noticed that whenever I'm in other buildings now or anywhere close to, I don't even know what, because I was never sensitive before. I'm, I'm no Luddite, I have, you know, I have computers, I have all the stuff that, that you know, most of us have, and I've never been sensitive at all. But now when wherever I go I'm feeling the same as I felt in my apartment feeling dizzy and nauseous and a sort of a metallic taste in my mouth um, headache and pressure on my head and just feeling like I want to sort of faint or, or throw up and that's wherever I go now so I found myself becoming increasingly sensitive to my own you know my own computer and my own cell phone in ways that I never was before imagine the implications of a weapon with no visible trace a weapon that could knock out tanks, ships, and planes as fast as the speed of light. The same technology with modifications could disorient and even tranquilize military personnel, rendering them virtually helpless in the battle zone. 
These are the new weapons of war we will examine in this series. For the past 40 years, the world has been riveted by the threat of nuclear war, and more recently by the prospect of space defenses using lasers and other modern technologies. But while both sides at the Geneva summit will be focusing on these matters, progress is being made in even newer weapons that could render any arms agreement relatively useless. Lightning is the most dramatic form of energy to be found in nature. Scientists have succeeded in creating limited types of artificial lightning, and some think that these could be the forerunners of a new type of directed energy weapon, part of a family of weapons which operate within the radio frequency segment of the electromagnetic spectrum and are thus referred to as radio frequency weapons. Dr. James Frazier has researched electromagnetic effects for the Air Force for over 10 years, and he, like a small but growing number of weapons experts, feels that radio frequency, or RF weapons, could be the wild card in the ongoing arms race. You could have tremendous amounts of radiated power, and uh, what you did with that power then is a matter of engineering design and what, what your goal is. Robert Bass, a physicist and Ph.D. in mathematics, is working on U.S. weapons research. He says that the Soviets seem to be ahead in a number of areas, and especially in RF weapons. We are behind uh, the Soviet Union in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams. Dr. Bass and others feel the most likely form of Soviet RF weaponry would be high-powered microwaves, similar to a focused ultra-high intensity radar beam. It would literally cook humans and knock out computers and electronic surveillance and communications gear. An operational RF weapon, relatively cheap and reusable, could devastate sophisticated and expensive war machinery. The $20 million F-16 fighter, for example, is totally controlled through electronic sensors and computers. With no manual flight controls, the plane would literally fall out of the sky after being hit with a high-intensity pulse of microwave radiation. Scientists say that microwaves and other types of RF pulses operating at specific frequencies or windows can be transmitted with little or no loss of power. Machines known as gyrotrons can produce the massive pulses needed to drive these devices, and it's believed that the Soviet Union has a three- to five-year lead in this technology. Over the past year, CNN has repeatedly asked the Department of Defense and the Air Force about radio frequency weapons. After much resistance, DOD finally said that the subject was too sensitive to discuss. In my next report, unexplained cloud-like phenomena, which may be evidence of a Soviet breakthrough in RF technology. Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments. This is a Soviet LIDA machine. It transmits low-energy radio pulses between 0 and 100 cycles per second. In the Soviet Union, LIDARs have been used for years to tranquilize psychiatric patients without physical contact. This sound, which is received by shortwave radios in the United States, is generated by another Soviet radio frequency device. It is known as the woodpecker because of its tapping noise. It is broadcast by a number of high-powered radio transmitters operating deep in the Soviet Union since July 4, 1976. Though the official Defense Department explanation of the woodpecker is that it is an over-the-horizon radar designed to track U.S. missile launches, some uh, scientists suspect well, that the woodpecker is designed to interfere with human uh, brain function. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the potential that this has for producing a direct psychoactive effect upon a total American population is there, has never been disproven. Dr. Robert Becker is a pioneer in the field of bioeffects of electromagnetism. Uh, the signal range within which the woodpecker operates is that which has been reported by many investigators to produce a tranquilizing effect upon animals. We are just incredibly sensitive to these magnetic stimuli. Dr. Bob Beck, a Ph.D. in nuclear engineering, has done extensive research into electromagnetic effects on humans. The signal was permeating power grids in the United States. It was being picked up by power lines, re-radiated. It was coming into the homes on the light circuits. I was surprised uh, after coming here that the influence of electromagnetic fields uh, was uh, almost completely ignored here. Dr. Larissa Valenskaya was heavily involved in Soviet electromagnetic research before being allowed to emigrate to the United States. She told CNN about Soviet research in electromagnetic effects. They demonstrated theoretically and also demonstrated experimentally that um, 
low frequency, low uh, um, uh, energy electromagnetic fields also can um, uh, possess biological, infant biological efficiency yeah? uh, because uh, uh, any field not only carries energy but also carries information. She stated that the research was carried out on orders from the Soviet government. And of course, uh, the military were extremely interested in, uh, in uh, this potential of remote influence. Uh, Is the United States military working in the field of electronic mind control? Officially, the Department of Defense will not comment because the subject area is, quote, too sensitive. But CNN has learned from this government scientist who did not want to be identified that a Navy laboratory conducted research into the use of an RF device for counterterrorism and special operations. It's possible to entrain a certain percentage of a population, apparently, with weak magnetic fields. The study also showed that RF signals could dissolve certain types of rat brain cells at a distance, causing disorientation and nausea. According to the scientist, even though the program was successful, the government never followed up on it. Dr. James Frazier did electromagnetic research for the U.S. Air Force for many years. At one time, he proposed a battlefield RF weapon system. You could uh, make a, uh, an antenna that would be carryable by a helicopter, and that this could be expected to produce uh, a wide variety of symptoms, actually, by humans who happen to be standing in the beam. According to Dr. Fraser, the Air Force never followed up. At Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, another RF weapons concept is nicknamed the Brain Bomb. According to the book Star Warriors, the Brain Bomb would focus a nuclear blast into a huge pulse of low-frequency RF energy that would stun huge numbers of troops. Apparently, it too has not yet been funded. The Department of Defense will not comment about Soviet RF weapons, or if American RF weapons development is going forward. However, experts interviewed by CNN say that the Soviets are apparently ahead and could exploit that lead in a surprise strategic move, a move that could have grave consequences for the United States. From Washington, this is Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments. This is a Tesla coil. It was invented some 90 years ago, but now a growing number of experts in the United States feel that it may form the basis of a new generation of Soviet weapons. They are known as radio frequency, or RF weapons, because they operate in the radio frequency spectrum. Their existence is noted in this U.S. Department of Defense publication, which says the Soviets could use them to destroy components of missiles, to interfere with radar and other electronic systems, and even to alter human mind functions. The concept of RF weaponry was predicted at the turn of the century by Nikola Tesla, an American who had emigrated from Yugoslavia. He is best remembered as the man who invented alternating current electricity. In 1899, Tesla built this giant coil which produced 10 million volts of artificial lightning. From it, he theorized the possibility of death rays. This and many other of his ideas about the physics of electricity were ridiculed by the scientific establishment. Pure science is not a sure thing. You can't predict what's going to work out and what's not going to work out. Robert Golka, a research scientist, built a replica of the Tesla coil about 80 years later. Golko was trying to produce a phenomenon known as ball lightning. He also used a Tesla coil to conduct testing for the U.S. Air Force. What I was doing was setting in maybe five-foot-long models of advanced fighter aircraft, and we would want to try to find out which part, of the airplane, which part of the airplane was more vulnerable to lightning strikes, whether it was a wingtip or the canard where the pilot sat. The These band, experiments the could also the demonstrate the effect of the electromagnetic pulse of a nuclear blast and, Golka says, the effect of RF weapons as well. Golka thinks that Tesla's theory, that electromagnetic power could be transmitted through the Earth and its atmosphere without wires, is a key element in the Soviet Union's work on RF weapons. Tesla's novel weapons theories were generally ignored in the United States. Nikola Tesla died in 1943, and after the Second World War, all his papers and effects were shipped to his native Yugoslavia, where they were enshrined in a museum. Some say that that museum proved to be a gold mine for Soviet weapons scientists. We haven't even formally, so far as I know, to ourselves, admitted that these weapons exist in the hands of the Soviet Union. Weapons analyst Tom Bearden, a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel, is among a small group of scientists and engineers who believe that the Soviets have perfected Tesla's ideas 
and are developing radio frequency weapons on a scale unimagined in this country. There have been a series of tests of these kinds of weapons, apparently, for a number of years. For example, airliners from Iran, uh, before the fall of the Shah, saw deep within the Soviet Union very large uh, glowing spherical balls of light which started out small and then expanded to very large size which are apparently uh, these kinds of weapons for use in an anti-ballistic missile defense role. Bearden believes that these satellite photographs are of mysterious non-nuclear explosions near an uninhabited island in the East Siberian Sea and that they are discharges from an RF weapon that uses intersecting energy beams called scalars. In doing so you can create for example either an electromagnetic explosion at a distance or you can create an electromagnetic implosion at a distance, the extraction of energy from a distant point. Uh, this would look like a cold explosion, so to speak. And I believe the thing on April the 9th, 1984, off the coast of Japan that involved several 747 jet airliners, I believe that incident was a test of a cold explosion weapons. At least it met all the characteristics. Pilot Doug Happ was in one of the five airline crews that saw an incredibly large cloud rising from the moonlit overcast below. Uh, it looked like a plate coming up through an overcast, and it, but it just kept expanding. I have a question. Which palm tree looks the healthiest? This one? This one? This one. That one. Or that one. I have another question. Which palm tree looks the sickest? That one. That one. That one? That one? Or that one? Well, if you said that one, you're right. Would you like to live next to a cell tower? Now here's another story I found very interesting, and I think this is a good one to end the video on. Wi-Fi visualization lets us see the ghostly waves that surround us. Lewis Hernan, a PhD candidate with the Architecture and Interaction Design Group at Newcastle University, is exploring a concept and he's developed a machine that turns internet signals into vibrant LED-based forms. So these are actual images of the experiment, and what you're looking at are Wi-Fi waves. And these things are all around us at all times. It's crazy to think how many of these towers are going up. How many more of these signals are scrambling all around us. You know, could there be spiritual entities, beings, inside of these Wi-Fi signals? And if so, it's even creepier to think that these things are infiltrating the human body and the human mind. So food for thought, I guess. And I'll leave you with that. This 5G beast system is going up all around us right before our very eyes. And there are people all around the world that are trying to fight this in their own communities. I can't blame them. The interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. Everyone knows the government agencies are corrupt. It's common sense. It's clear that the system is broken and they're all crossing the line. Homeland Security, IRS, the USDA, the Treasury, the EPA, all of it BS. But rarely is it so blatant as it is with the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. Because, well, very, very few people pay attention at all to them. 
hardly any resistance was put up against net neutrality rules, and that was a fairly big media story. Almost no one said anything about the mergers between the giant telecoms and the general complete takeover of communications. There really wasn't any resistance to the 1996 Telecommunications Act, which opened up a whole can of worms, a whole set of Pandora's boxes with the NSA and everyone else. But now they've opened up the floodgates to massive corporate control over our lives, a total surveillance system on the part of government agencies and their contractors, and the very near blanketing of the entire population. Literally of everyone in the world. Literally of everyone in the world. Autonomous vehicles. Smart city energy grids, transportation networks, and water systems. Immersive education and entertainment will come from the cloud. The driving force of the 21st century will be powerful processing centralized in the cloud and wirelessly connected to thin clients all of whom will be saturated with gigahertz signals literally everywhere they go on the planet, and no one has permission. The United States will be the first country in the world to open up high band spectrum for 5G networks and applications. And that's damn important. And will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. Big surprise, since this FCC chairman, now a former chairman who was appointed by Obama, big surprise since he used to be the president of two industry lobbyist organizations. Tom Wheeler was formerly president of the National Cable and Telecommunications Association and the CEO of the Cellular Telecom and Internet Association. Chairman Wheeler put the entire fixed and mobile broadband industry under a stricter regulatory regime. He has done so many things that have angered his former employees at, employers at the NCTA and CTIA have sued the FCC during his tenure. He explains his actions by saying, I used to be an advocate for corporate interests, and I hope I was a good one. But today, my client is the American people, and I want to be the best damn advocate for the American people that I can be. So he represents the industry. He got appointed to the position, and he just fox and hen house the whole thing. He just prostituted it all. So it's no wonder that he gives a no holds barred, full force push to usher in 5G everywhere upon everyone, to swiftly and fully silence any and all dissenters, to ignore all the real questions, and to make sure that the safety data, to make sure that safety studies don't even happen. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. We won't wait for the standards. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. And to make sure that questions about the biological effects of non-ionizing radiation are kept to an absolute minimum off the table, out of the public eye, and nowhere near the FCC conversation. Um, how many people have to die from brain cancer before the federal government puts warning labels on cell phones? It's time to tell the American public the truth. Wireless causes cancer. Because they're going to rubber stamp this thing right through, no doubt about it. They already have. And what else would you expect from a lobbyist? The trade-off gives total power to these companies, to various government agencies, and to anyone in between who's interested in spying, hackers. It opens it up for everyone. And as technology races forward in what is already a world dominated by cell phones and people looking lost into little screens, it will now be completely saturated with high-speed connections. The next generation of wireless must be mobile fiber. 10 to 100 times faster than what we're used to today. We need to speed the deployment of 5G here on our shores. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Of hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, 
you can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet Every to be single imagined. device and appliance and manufacturer is being fitted with a two way communication device and it sends data back. Spying and surveillance is completely built in. It's a total default and it's the given. Location tracking, health data, audio and visual recordings, text, and everything else is going to be continually collected. And Tom Wheeler of the FCC freely admits it. He thinks it's great because it's going to make everything faster and it's going to make more money. We take our most significant step yet down the path to our 5G future. Others have covered it as well, but this is an issue that is not well known enough. 5G is a huge upgrade to the system. It is a complete overhaul compared with 3G and 4G. It's not only dramatically faster speeds, which is what they're going to play up to sell it to consumers and tell everyone what a great convenience and advancement that it is, but it is also a literal complete infrastructure overhaul. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. This means that very narrow signals in an urban environment tend to bounce around buildings and other obstacles, making it difficult to connect to a moving point. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals, coupled with sophisticating pro sophisticated processing that allows a moving device to pick up all of the signals that are bouncing around and create one coherent connection. They're going to put up boxes on telephone poles, or at least that's what the articles have said, and they're going to be on ground level sites and everywhere else, and it will completely replace the now obsolete cell towers that you've seen around and you've got used to seeing. Those are obsolete. These are coming in very quickly. The cell phone and wireless companies are spending billions of dollars. They're racing the complete installation of the system by 2020. And that's now only three years away. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. First commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. They're fueling money into cities and private owners where the towers will be installed. They're paying them off and they're moving f so fast that there's going to be very few places that are free at all anymore. I don't want to add paranoia, I don't want to make people fearful, but basically, where can you run from this? Once the system is fully launched and up, it's it's going to be just like the Terminator Genesis system. It, it's going to be the rise of AI, and it's going to be like there's no looking back. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole providence of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. We are the pioneers of a new spectrum frontier. No one gave permission for this because most people don't fully understand what's happening or why it matters. They're going to click on little agreements on their cell phone for the different sites they visit, and they're going to have no idea how much is going to be taken from that. But it's clear that this is not a good bargain, and people need to be warned. They should try to oppose this in their local cities and where they can and try to challenge these companies because they don't want to face resistance and they don't want a population that knows about the dangers and the risks of this technology. But the capabilities of this technology are absolutely unfathomable. I can't cover it all in this video. Go look it up for yourself. Now, I'm not going to get into Dr. Ross a day of UCLA right now, do a more in-depth video later on, or a lot of the other brain doctors and neurological researchers, but Ross a day was working with the CIA and exchanging technology and study data with the Russians uh, back in the 60s and 70s and even further back, and he figured out scientifically, demonstratively, how non-ionizing radiation at various specific frequencies 
from microwaves or from other signals how they could alter human and animal behavior. For instance, a simple 10 hertz wave could put someone into a stupor within a couple of minutes using neuroelectric devices that they developed uh, in, by the 70s. They could put individuals or entire towns to sleep on command. They can aggravate people. They can alter their sexual preferences. They could delete their memories. They could turn on desire. They could turn on repulsion. And they could otherwise hijack someone's spontaneous and natural behavior. They could literally hijack your nervous system and your brain. And that was 30 or 40 years ago. Now things are very advanced, they're very precise, and they're very far along. There's discussions now at the Davos World Economic Forum that have broached the topic of mind reading and literal mind control. And these devices, the capability to do it, is built into everything. Every handheld unit, every laptop, mobile device that everyone's carrying around. And once things are fast enough with 5G, <laughs> all bets are off. The constant ubiquitous connection with these next generation 5G towers. I mean, what else can you say? You either see it or you don't. But I'm not cool with that. You might be wondering, well, why? Isn't Trump against this sort of thing? Isn't he against enslavement? I think in certain areas, yes. But think about what he said just recently at the West Virginia rally, where he openly talked about building more infrastructure, more jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, and you'll see very soon, but you're hearing about it, my administration is committed to rebuilding the depleted infrastructure of the United States. Think of it. We've spent $6 trillion in the Middle East and the Middle East is a hundred times worse than it was 16 years ago when we started. Can you believe this? What a shame. That is why we are pushing a $1 trillion new infrastructure investment bill. We're going to fix our roads. We're going to fix our bridges. We're going to fix our highways and our schools and our airports. We will create amazing monuments that inspire awe and wonder in our people. It used to be that way. It's not that way any longer. We have airports that look like third world countries. It's not going to be that way anymore. American workers will build this great future and American energy and American clean coal will power this future. We are the nation that put a man on the moon, that dug out the Panama Canal, and that won two world wars. We can do anything, we can build anything, and we can dream anything. The bottom line is that he is talking about the fourth industrial revolution and having the United States lead it. So yes, it is creating jobs. Yes, it is bringing back industry to the United States. But for what? What are we building? We're rebuilding everything to accommodate for the smart city for the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Now, there's a weird twist to this as well. Pedogate, Pizzagate has been a very, very important subject for independent researchers. And we've recently seen reports of celebrities starting to come out and talk about their encounters with these pedophiles who actually run Hollywood, the music industry. We know they're in the Vatican. We know they're in the government. But as more people speak up about this and this topic is exposed, what is it creating? Well, on the one hand, if all these celebrities are doing it for the common good of man, then this is a good thing. More people need to realize that there is a problem with pedophilia in this country, in our institutions. But in the same way God uses all situations for good, I think the enemy uses all situations for bad. And the exposing of pedogates and the pedophiles in our governments, in our institutions, 
might be the beginning of a larger enslavement program as part of this fourth industrial revolution, as part of this rebuilding infrastructure, as part of making America great again. Let me explain myself a little bit. Problem, reaction, solution. They used it in 9-11. They had the problem, which was 9-11, the terrorists. They had the reaction, we need to do something about it. And the solution, which is giving up more and more of our privacy in exchange for security. Thank you, government, for looking over us, right? Well, in the same way, this pedal problem really does accelerate this fourth industrial revolution in this way. The problem, elite pedophiles run almost everything. Guys like John Podesta running around doing weird things. And there are some researchers here who all they say is John Podesta needs to be in jail. I agree 100%. I think a lot of people need to be in jail. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Uma Abedin, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The list goes on and on and on. But once they're in jail, or if they even get to jail, so what? What then? Have we eradicated the problem? No, we haven't. So the problem of the elite pedophile ring will continue even if John Podesta goes to jail. The reaction? Citizen outrage. The more people realize this, the more people are going to speak up against it. Independent journalists, reporters have dedicated their time and energy to exposing Pedogate, which is a good thing. Solution though. What is the solution? Now, at a very basic level, the solution is more awareness so that you don't put your children in jeopardy. But we know that governments and institutions always like to step in with their solution. Now, let me give you some excerpts here from the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. This is from 8.7, where it says, Take immediate and effective measures to eradicate forced labor, end modern slavery and human trafficking, and secure the prohibition and elimination of the worst forms of child labor, including recruitment and use of child soldiers, and by 2025, end child labor in all its forms. So one of the plans of the agenda is to eliminate child trafficking. Interesting that the United Nations wants to be involved in this. This point is reiterated on 16.2, end abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of violence against and torture of children. But this is the kicker here. You keep going down. 16.8, broaden and strengthen the participation of developing countries in the institutions of global governance. 16.9, by the year 2030, provide legal identity for all, including birth registration. Legal identity for all. We just had one company start to actually make RFID implantable chips available for their employees. But digging more into this particular line item, they want to have everybody on a database by the year 2030. And Pedogate is a great way to get a lot of people to say, okay, you know what? I want my child to be accounted for. Let's put him or her in the system. Now, will that lead to microchipping children? I don't know. I don't think most people are going to accept that in the next 10 years. But with 5G technology, it is astronomically invasive in terms of the Internet of Things, everything connecting to the Internet, but also us being trackable, identifiable, etc. Our privacy is gone. And again, I titled this video Trump's New World Order because Donald Trump, as much as I've been trying to root for the guy, was totally behind getting drones and 5G technology out into the masses. Watch this clip here. Autonomous drone works on behalf of John and the team at Winter Construction. So John, if you want to say a little bit more to the President about how you've seen that experience been? We have to go out in the field and survey. 25 years ago, we didn't even know what a cell phone was. We looked today and, and, and we can actually uh, just, our life has kind of evolved around the technology. It's life changing. This drone is life changing. Um, we're, we're finding out daily, not in the quarry side of things, but in the construction side of things, at other uses. Um, we've actually started two other businesses up off the, the same drone, just using it in a different way. So it's... Uh, and yet right now, drones are becoming very powerful too. I see where they're lifting people. I don't know about the level of safety there, but uh, when I see that, but also I guess they're going to be lifting very heavy material at some point. Yeah, there's uh, this initiative uh, with other companies underway to effectively have delivery things done by a drone. This drone in particular is about just being able to collect aerial intelligence in a sequence way. 
and being able to deliver that to the user in a way that they weren't able to accomplish before. So John's able to get that work done in literally minutes after the drone flies versus usually it would take him days of just manual labor to be able to accomplish that same work. Fantastic job. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Randall? Yes, Mr. President, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about 5G technology in about two minutes, okay? Uh, guys like Jeff in out various internet of things, drones, autonomous cars are going to require a whole different level of speed and wireless networks. If you come over here, this is a residential neighborhood. If you want to get the kind of speeds required today, these lights are five. We have to take five of every one of these houses to get that kind of bandwidth. What 5G does, it says forget about all that fiber out here. Get fiber to this, this small cell, which uh, Marcel is going to show you here. This small cell will broadcast this kind of bandwidth to all these homes, okay? You no longer need to run fiber in here. So you can have speeds that are multiples of what the fastest cable technology can deliver today into the home with wireless technology. If you move into the city, what's happening? You want to get that bandwidth in there, the same thing. Fiber run to every one of these buildings. It takes a long time, big enough roads, bridges, and sidewalks, and so forth. 5G. 5G says no longer. In fact, all you need are small cells inside the city. And we can light up these buildings here as well, right? And then as you move to Wi-Fi, we have Wi-Fi deployed in these buildings all over the place. So customers moving in and out of the Wi-Fi arrangement. You can see the old big cell technology sitting on top of buildings, broadcasting right. throughout the city. But down the street level, the customer is being put on whatever network gives them the fastest speeds. This could be an autonomous car. It could be any number of things. And so the, as the car moves, it gets moved back and forth between the networks into another 5G deployment. And you're getting these kind of multiple gigabit speeds throughout cities without all the fiber having to be deployed into all these buildings. <coughs> really accelerates it, makes us get to, uh, to the market much faster. So five years ago, ten years ago, you couldn't have even imagined this. Wouldn't have thought about it. No, sir, we would not have. And this is 2018. We'll deploy in this kind of configuration. And the companies in here are. And in 2020, it becomes mobile. And so this handset will be getting these. So there has to be a tremendous construction saving, too, ultimately. It's a huge cons uh, construction saving. You don't have to deploy all this fiber. You see this little cell site here. You're going from deploying these big cell sites and towers to deploying these all over cities. That's what Marcelo is going to show you, what this technology looks like now. So, Mr. President, if I can summarize 5G, is $275 billion of investment in the next seven years, the creation of 3 million new jobs, and the contribution of $500 billion to the GDP of the United States. Mm -hmm. What is different between 4G and 5G? 4G, those were enormous towers that looked quite ugly. We're going to move to deploy millions of this, hundreds of thousands, and then millions of small cells all over the United States. The problem that we have is it takes us one year to get a city to give us a permit, but it takes us one hour to install them. And unless we can install them real fast, you know, we're going to lose that leadership that we have today. Those huge towers, all it is now, it's just a small cell. You put this on the, uh, on the utility poles, you put it in the cable strands, and that's all, that's all we need in order to enable. So when people ask about 5G... But is there must be local permits you need? Basically, we run into trouble with cities, municipalities, counties. Each one has its own idea of how much they should charge, how long should it take. How much is the federal permit? How long does that take? Well, this mainly we go down to the cities. Well, so we're working quite well with the city to a problem with certain cities. There's some cities that take 30 days, there's some cities that take two years, so it's impossible to block them. Okay. So this is why we need to fix this. And that's what 5G, when everybody talks about 5G. Well, we can do a recommendation to the cities all over the country to get it going, and Gary, maybe they can move it faster. Because this is truly a great process. But why don't we do a very strong letter of recommendation so they can get it done much faster? And we're doing that all over the country. You know what? Well, shot you clocks. The FCC at one time put in place to deploy these kind of cell sites. Yeah. Shot clocks. You have 180 days to get a permit done or a yeah. no permit. Something similar to the to be done. But we're doing that with highways. It would take sometimes 15 to 20 years to get permits to build a small road or a highway. Yeah. And we are going to bring it down, try to bring it down to one year. Yeah. Maximum one year. Yeah. And you have the same thing. This is much easier. So this is really much easier. Believe me. The Great. U.S. is a leader in 4G. We lost 3G, <coughs> and every country, China, Europe, is basically streamlining the process to get their faster. So this will be going into many other countries, yes. by okay. other companies, by you, by no. We, we we only operate in the U.S., and our goal is to basically we want the U.S. to lead 5G.
because of the speed, because of the job creation. You will if you can get your permits. Absolutely. China That's has much less trouble getting permits. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, the folks here promoting the 5G technology are saying that they're having trouble getting permits to install these things because of legislation, certain cities, certain locations, taking much longer to allow these things to take place. And as you saw early on, there are certain communities that don't even want them or are highly skeptical of this sort of technology becoming part of their towns, their neighborhoods, because the way this works, they're going to have to have a lot more smaller pods instead of one giant tower to get the 5G technology to work effectively. And so the infrastructure is much more invasive. But here's Trump just saying, hey, here's what we can do. Let's write a letter of recommendation. Let's move this forward. Let's push this forward. And keeping that in mind with this idea that he's going to rebuild and create jobs and everything else. I'm just asking you guys to stay level headed about this. I know there's a lot of Trump supporters. I know there's a lot of Trump haters. And the bottom line is, if you're a Trump supporter, I understand your perspective. But you got to face the facts here and see that he is also part of the system. And he is also building a part of the system that has not been discussed too much by too many people. And also that if you're a Trump hater, it doesn't mean you're necessarily a liberal, okay? There is a massive psychological operation taking place. And that's why I bring up Pedogate and Pizzagate as a possible psychological operation in order to create a solution that benefits the 2030 Sustainable Development UN Agenda, which clearly does not have our best interest in mind. It is clearly what Zbigniew Brzezinski wanted in the technocracy. And of course, tie into all that the topic of blockchain, of cryptocurrencies, of the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, virtual realities, augmented realities, all the things that we touch on on this channel. Those will be enhanced. They will become faster. They will become more prominent, more invasive. And so what I am proposing is that we all start to, if you haven't already, begin developing skills to be self-sustainable. That is to live off the land, whether it's to have a small garden in your backyard or have mechanisms to get clean water. Just start moving in that direction if you haven't already, because that's the actual smart thing, not smart cities. And I'm not trying to sit here and be a fear monger. I'm not trying to say, oh, it's all going to end fear, fear, fear. Most likely we are going to be using 5G tech. All right. But there has to be a way for us to get away from it. And if that means moving to an area where this infrastructure is not so invasive, we're going to have to think about that. Everybody has their own personal responsibility when it comes to this, your own personal convictions. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. That's up to you. But it is important to start thinking about this because by 2020, they want to roll out 5G and 10 gigs per second upload speed is ridiculous and partly awesome. I get to download a 4K movie in a couple seconds instead of waiting an hour or whatever. But is that really worth it? Is that worth your sovereignty? Is that worth your freedom? Is that worth your privacy? Things to think about. Get a hard copy of the Bible if you don't have it already. That's going to be the most important thing as these things continue to develop and the enslavement program and the prince of the power of the air continues to build the satanic kingdom on earth. We are the global leader in 4G. We have 5% of the world's population, but one third of its 4G deployment. But laurels are not good resting places. So I think we have to start moving on 5G. Because today, the bulk of our spectrum activity when it comes to mobile takes place at three gigahertz or below. But going forward, we are gonna to have to bust through that ceiling all the way up to 24 gigahertz or perhaps even as high as 90 gigahertz. We are going to have to look to infinity and beyond. And then we're going to have to combine those stratospheric frequencies with dense networks of small cells. And if we do that right, we will have higher speeds with our wireless networks than we have ever seen before. And I think that is what 5G is going to look like. And I think we need to get moving because the rest of the world is already on to this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, stay watchful, stay vigilant, stay sober-minded.
Have an awesome day, guys. God bless. The 11th, I noticed this odd configuration on the sun, and I, I paused it, and as I got to looking around, I noticed other things that looked just like random honeycomb all over the place. So I happened to have a piece of honeycomb that came out of my brother-in-law's house. I took photographs of it, and it was an actual active beehive that was in their house. They had to have it professionally removed, and I was there when they did it. So I got a few pictures when they took it out, but it looks exactly like that. There's honeycomb, and there's what looks like honeycomb on this particular still image on the surface of the sun. So I made a little video clip, which is right here, and it's the same exact time frame, but it's like two or three hours on both sides. And you can see how this thing turns as it comes right there, as it comes towards us, especially here. You can see what appear to be lines that it's like right here is an obvious one to me looks like a honeycomb um, where else I saw some but this thing you got to keep in mind is moving it's constantly changing shape at least up here the 193 is the upper levels of the atmosphere of the Sun and then as the numbers go up with this instrument I think it's as the numbers go up I don't know each number represents a layer of atmosphere of the Sun how they view the Sun uh, and how they filter the light and some of the instruments on board this spacecraft view the actual surface of the Sun so to me I don't this could be a processing glitch I don't know but it looks like like right here you can see some more it's like it's all over the place some of its more obvious than others because again this thing is moving and it's not going to give you a clear perspective this here was at just the right angle and there it is it's kind of hard to miss you put it side by side you can see their similarities I'm not saying that that's hundred percent sure what it is because I don't know I'm just saying it does look close here's another little video loop and I've adjusted the color just a little bit and I've gotten in a little bit tighter to get a little better actually maybe not better but at least it's a different look and you can see what looks like compartmentalized light structures that's what that looks like to me does it mean that it is but it holds its position for quite some time this is over the course of a, a few hours and you know we're seeing things in the sky that that resemble this we're seeing this quite often nowadays so it just kind of reminded me of that I'm not saying that that's what it is I'm just saying you know we're seeing that a lot in different random photographs that one there a guy sent me this was um, in a photograph taken of Crazy Horse Monument in South Dakota and the Sun was not in the photograph normally we see a lot of reflections in photographs that include the Sun this photograph however did not include the Sun and it was in two separate photographs not just one so I don't know what we've got going on here if anything I promised I would get it up and I try to be a man of my word so here it is for whatever it's worth I don't know what we've got going on here if anything um, my friends but that right there especially to me looks exactly like that it's a perfect match so whether it's actual surface honeycomb or something similar to that I don't know but it's very very similar those two sections right here and here match match and in fact the one on the left the Sun looks more like honeycomb than the actual honeycomb on the right
Jesus says, it will be as in the days of Noah, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. What's so special about the days of Noah? Deception, devastation, depravity, because the human race had fallen into a reorientation of what it meant to be human. Now, I'm not going to get into a long study on Genesis chapter 6 where the fallen angels came and cohabitated with women and brought forth the Nephilim and destroyed the gene pool and only Noah was pure and could bring the human race into salvation. That's why God had to destroy the world. We all say, well, it was because of sin. Well, he should have destroyed it 10 years after that. Did Noah's family fall into sin? Yeah, so why didn't he destroy them? No, it had to go further than a sin issue. It was a reorientation of humanity. And the DNA was in fact changing, but I'm not going to get into that. But let me bring you up to the present trending right now. So in three ways, there is a human reorientation. Number one is an identity. Identity. We start with orientation and gender. This is just the beginning. Don't think this is the worst of it. This is simply the beginning of changing the identity of man. It starts with, and we've seen it in our days, sexual orientation. But it is a reorienting of our sexuality. And from the reorientation of sexual orientation, it has now moved into gender identity changes. How many of you know that? And so now we have come to the place where we do not have to identify the gender of a child even when it's born and it's got all the parts that I'd identify it. We can decide what gender we want that child to be later. And so there is a gender identification and with it has come all sorts of body modifications. All right, that's the ground floor. Now already this is completely acceptable worldwide, globally, in our society. A gender reorientation and a sexual reorientation. And it's completely here, folks. It's already here. So if you don't understand what's trending, lift your head up and look. All right? Understand the times you're in and that there's a present truth to deal with this. From the issue of identity, we now go into the sense of new creation. The ground floor was sexual orientation, gender identity, and body modification. And now body modification is moving into DNA modification and transhumanism. 
And if you don't understand what transhumanism is, you need to see what's trending. This is globally. The belief that the human race will evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations through science and technology. How many of you know what's trending usually hits Hollywood first? And from Hollywood it goes into the TVs. And from the TVs it saturates the minds of our young people. Old people say, oh, come on, that's just funny science fiction. But it is so saturating our culture. But what is transhumanism? Let me help you understand some of it. I don't know if you've heard of Dmitry Itz Itzkov, a Russian billionaire, founder of New Media Stars, web-based media company, founder of the 2045 Initiative, which aims to achieve cybernetic immortality by 2045. He's a billionaire. This is well-funded. This is scientific research, cutting edge. It's what's trending. It's combining the mechanics uh, of, of robotics and cyber science into the body to mingle the body with this level of genetic reorientation so that your body won't die, your soul will inhabit it. We go into the realm of cloning human beings and having host bodies, right? Guess who wants to occupy host bodies? the demonic. So we're reorienting human beings. Now you're going to say, but <laughs> come on, get it. this is just science fiction. Wake up, people. This is not science fiction. This is science reality. Things always start with science fiction only to be prophetic into where it's leading people. You remember Steve Jobs. People don't know what they want till we show them what they want. People want immortality without God. They're getting it. By 2045, they want to fully reorient society. And the beginning, I mean, just start watching and looking. Be alert. This is happening right now. And then the third aspect of this rehumanization, this reorientation of what is human. We've changed gender. We've changed body modification. We are now changing what it is to be human and mechanical or machine or at least genetically altering DNA to now the third level and that's what's trending and that is heavenly beings. We call them aliens. Oh, now you're way out there, Pastor. Come on. Now you're way out there with UFOs and aliens and all this stuff. Now you're way out there. Man, if you don't understand what's trending and what's happening in this world, where do you think all the beasts are coming out of in the book of Revelation? Where do you think these frog creatures are? Toads? What do you think all of this activity in the heavenlies is happening? You want to see the Bible in the headlines? Here it is. And I'm not kidding. And I'm not deluded. This is the third phase. There have been more sightings. And remember, what did Jesus say? There will be a strong delusion. It will be so extreme that even the very elect could possibly be deceived. When people start showing up, other beings from other planets... They're not coming from other planets. They're coming from other dimensions. Does anybody have an idea of what dimension these beings are coming from? Come on, church. They're demonic. So the realm of the demonic, you could dress them up like aliens, you can dress them up in saucers, you can dress them up any way you want, but it's when the demonic comes to planet Earth as never before. Will the church be ready? We're still arguing whether we should, I don't know, have flavored cream cheese or not. Now let me ask you this. With this strong deception, strong delusions, and, and folks, you just need to talk to your children. This is the reality they have. If you're not aware of what your kids believe, and, and so... You're trying to bring them to church once a month when daily 
hour by hour, minute by minute, they are being brainwashed and hypnotized and reoriented both in sexuality and in gender and in what is being human and where did we come from and what's coming to visit. We need to bring our kids here and instruct them. We need to bring our friends and family here so that we would be instructed in understanding what is trending. Now, hey, listen, where sin abounds, can someone give an answer to that? Where sin abounds, what much more? grace. When you heard Jesus in Matthew 24 talk about this, he's saying deception's coming, devastation's coming, but that's not all. That's not the end. Then he says that there's going to be such depravity, and he says, but that's not all. And he said, it ain't over till this word gets out to all nations. And that's what is mounting in the midst of this. So we need a church that's ready, that's in present truth, that is fired up and can handle these situations. And that's what I'm here to do with you. That's what this church is about. We want to be a present truth church. We want to instruct you. We want to teach you. We want to show you how to handle these situations. So when an alien shows up at your door, you call that thing out for what it is. All right? Don't get all E.T. and try and phone home. You call that thing out for what it is. And when people are confused and they don't understand their gender and their identity, you point them to the one who can identify them in the depths of their soul and in the depths of their DNA and let them know that God knows who they are and God wants to bring them into the fullness of who they've been called to be. We've got the answer for such things. Now, let's take a look at this. And so, what's trending? We're looking at deception in three ways. It's the reorientation of humanity in its identity, in its new creation, and in heavenly beings. That's the deception. And the answer to this deception is Jesus Christ, the Word become flesh. Let me help you understand. First of all, concerning identity and reorientation. This is exactly why Jesus died. Jesus died. The Word became flesh. Jesus became a human. Is humanity important to God? How do you know? Somebody quote John 3.16. There we go. Listen, you don't need to study deep theology for this one. It's really simple. And he demonstrated it really plain. On the cross. All right? How many of you are equipped to tell other people God so loves you that Jesus died for you? That is the power that can cut through the deception of who am I. Because when Peter identified Jesus, Jesus identified Peter. Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? Well, uh, what's trending right now, Jesus, is that uh, you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Well, I've heard trending is that you're quite possibly Jeremiah the prophet. Well, my trending uh, in my Facebook says that quite possibly you are that chosen one that Moses talked about. Peter says, look at all, this is silly. I don't care what's trending. I'll tell you, Jesus, in present truth, you are Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's what broke through. And he says, the Father revealed that. Not just what's trending out there among the people. The Father revealed that. The church has got to stop paying attention to what's trending for what we should do. We're seeing what's trending so that we can speak into it as to what God told us to do. But it's what God's telling us to do as to what we speak to what's trending out there. Does that make sense? Church, come on. We've got to hear from Father again, don't we? Now, we've got the answer. It's already here, and we're deceived as if we don't have an answer for all these problems. We certainly do. The issue is deception as to our identity. Half of you, all of you, didn't know who you were till you met Jesus. There might be a few of you sitting in here who don't know who you are. You're confused. You're troubled. And I want to tell you, Jesus can identify you. As Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, that's right. The Father's revealed it. And you are Petros. Simon, this is who you are. You're Petros. You're the rock. 
I'm going to build my church on the foundation of your confession. That's who you are. And when you get old, you're going to die like this. And you're going to do this. And you're going to be that. When Peter identified Jesus, Jesus identified him. Identity. You need to learn how to begin identifying people. When they don't understand, help them understand that there is a God who loves them and who is holy and that they are separated from Him by their sin and that there is a remedy for that sin. God so loved them that He died and bled for them to wash that sin off so that they can have an identity in Him. It's Jesus 101 and that's the first thing that the enemy has attacked. Secondly is a new creation. They want to recreate mankind to live forever. But because Jesus died, we have eternal life put in us. Why would you want to live on this planet in this condition forever? Because they have no other hope. And what they don't understand is you put, get a bunch of robotic people, souls living in robots, you still have the same depravity. The parts just won't wear out. That's called hell. Is anybody with me? All they're doing is recreating hell, and who do you think is behind it? Come on, do you see the deception? But you tell the people there is a spirit of power, love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. This power is the indwelling Holy Spirit. Once you've been identified by Jesus, then you can be occupied by the very presence of God Himself. You don't need by robotics. We've got the Holy Spirit, amen? We are a new creation, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And last of all is the heavenly beings. We need wiser, smarter other beings to come here. We were the seed they planted in this planet. They're so brilliant and so smart. Can I tell you something? Demons have an understanding because they're outside of this corporal realm, corporal realm, they have an understanding in the spirit realm, but it doesn't mean they're all that much smarter, they just have more information. But the problem is, they still are depraved. All right? So this alien abduction, this alien enterprise, these demonics coming into the earth are only going to bring more corruption, not enlightenment. There is one who has come, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And can I tell you what they want to do? They want to replace the church. They, they already have eliminated God from the picture. So who do they have to eliminate on planet Earth that represents the kingdom of God? Hello? This is a showdown, people. If you don't understand the enemy that's at your door. Come on, you're talking aliens. I'm talking demons. And you need to understand this. This is a present trending and reality. I mean, the sightings are off the charts. It's getting more and more blatant. And so you need to understand that you're going to start seeing these things like never before. And if you're not prepared, you're going to freak out. Oh, where's God? Where's God? There are aliens. Oh my gosh, maybe there isn't a God. You know how many people we're going to lose over this? Because the deception is going to be so grand. Now again, you think I'm nuts and you think I'm crazy. Um, you're going to have to deal with that. Can the gospel withstand this level of deception? Absolutely. The gospel can. It's whether the church can. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there first comes a falling away and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's going to be a great falling away. The word is apostate, apostate, apostolo. So it, there's an apostate activity going on. Those who were saved, or at least we thought they were saved, Christians, believers, are going to fall away in great droves. The big question is, has it already begun? Absolutely, it has. And so I'm calling you to hang in there. I'm calling you to hang in. 
And I don't mean it in any mean way. I'm, I mean it in a way of warning and trying to prepare you for the craziness that's coming. And half of you are saying, oh, we don't have to put up with it. We're just going to get taken out of here. Well, then who's going to do the job that the church is supposed to do? Who's going to bring salvation to planet Earth? I don't know. I just want to get out of here. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So what's trending? The day is drawing near. Deception is trending. How are we going to beat it? We gather together, spurring one another on, in love and in good works so that we're prepared to handle the craziness that's going on out there and the level of deception. You're going to find yourself drifting into this. But we need to gather together. Here's one of the biggest problems with the internet, with so much uh, mass media. You can now pick your top 40 hits of preachers. You can watch anybody you want, the best of them all. I can just sit at home and watch them. But you can't get what's happening in our midst. Oh, I can have the... Are you saying I can't have the Holy Spirit? Yeah, the Holy Spirit's there with you wherever you are. I'm talking about the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the called out ones, the church. What's going to start taking place in our midst is where there's deception, revelation's going to come. Where there's depravity, sanctification, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Where there are false signs and wonders, there will be true signs and wonders where the people of God gather. And you've got to learn how to get along if you're going to try to win the lost. Did you know that lost people are people? If you can't get along with the church, how are you going to get along with them? I don't have to. I'm saved. I can stay away from them. You're not supposed to!